uh, bringing in also John Baptiste Parazzi to partner Stevenson in the midfield. Gordis comes back into the back four. Atiba Harris is on the right hand side of midfield. And yeah, what I'm looking for, Anthony, right from the start, has to be energy. High energy here, here at Boxshaw, a very important stretch of games. And there's Ismail Elfath, the man in the middle for this one, as we are underway here in Santa Clara. That's Kari Stevenson and Atiba Harris getting into the act early. Here you see Harris, who came over from Colorado in the trade for Marvin Chavez in the offseason. Alan Gordon, after the touch from... John Baptiste Pirazzi, his teammates just refer to him as JB. I think I'm going to do that as well. <laughs> it's safer that way. Of course, Colorado moving right to left, wearing their burgundy and blue and white uniforms. That one will go out, and Colorado will have the possession. If it seems like these two teams just played, it's because just three weeks ago, they played to a scoreless draw in Colorado. Yeah, and it wasn't the a greatest, you know, visual game to watch. I mean, it was a 0-0 game, but it's a good point by the road on, uh, on the road by the Quakes, and, but I'm looking for a lot more from the team this evening. Colorado working in San Jose's end to start this match, and getting it out of danger for San Jose. It'll be a throw for Colorado coming into this match with a mark of 4-2-2, two two, 14 points, fourth in the West. But San Jose has owned the head-to-head -head in the last eight matches, 5-0-3. Oh, that one will go out. Wells Fargo has teamed up with the Earthquakes to provide a donation of $250 for every Quakes goal this season. And you can now nominate a youth sports program to receive a grant by visiting sjearthquakes.com forward slash goals for education. Wells Fargo, together, we'll go far. The last few matches, we've seen teams try and jump on the Quakes early. Vancouver did a great job. There's a shot. And that one went over the bar. As Edson Bundle getting involved early. There's your head coach, Mark Watson, who took over, of course, last May. His first match was against Colorado and picked up a victory there. Yeah, I was talking to Mark before the game and also to Pablo Mastorini, and, and both coaches really are taking advantage of, well, taking an opportunity to blood some new players with three games in eight days. and. Uh, Mastorini's given some new starts as well to uh, Alundo on the left-hand side, Kamani Hill has also brought Jared Watts back in the midfield. And one other player we need to mention is the guy on the ball right now, Ty Harden, who came in last-minute scratch for Clarence Goodson with a shin contusion. And so Ty Harden's coming to partner Victor Bernardes at the back. Chase Alina is playing it forward for Gordon at the top of the 18. With that one, just slipped off the right boot of Gordo. And San Jose will have a throw in. And Shea Salinas so dangerous this year. Yeah, he's just been a he's just been a thorn in everybody's side, hasn't he? Shea Salinas, a lot of confidence. Early slip there, and on the right hand side for Piermeyer, and Piermeyer knows that Shea's going to be going at him all night long. Jordan Stewart with a cross, and it's tipped over the end line. Clint Irwin, the keeper, unable to get there. And San Jose will have the first corner kick of the match here in minute number four. This great move by Jordan Stewart getting behind the defense. Great move by Shea Salinas. Alan Gordon's there for the tap in. It's a good energy by the Earthquakes early. Numbers in the box as well. Atiba Harris had some space right around the penalty spot. An in-swinger from Shea. Gordo with a header on. But we've got contact. Alan Gordon getting tangled up with Shane O'Neill right at the edge of the six. I think it's clear to say that Gorda didn't agree with that decision, but Shane O'Neill's just falling backwards into Alan Gorda. I really don't want to see what the foul was, unless it was against Wondolowski in the middle. It certainly wasn't on Alan Gordon. Referees see so much pushing and pulling in there. I know the uh, MLS officials are asking the referees to monitor that closely, but certainly nothing that guy did wrong. Well, it's interesting to see Shane O'Neill go down as he was the one that was involved in tangling up with Alan Gordon in Colorado early. There's the head coach for Colorado, Pablo Mastorani, 37 years old, who replaced Oscar Pareja. Yeah, he's done a great job since taking over, and, and uh, a first-year coach, an ex-superstar player for Colorado and MLS, and he's missing one of his top, top players today, Vicente Sanchez, the Uruguayan, who leads the team in 
in goals scored, five goals so far this season, and uh, uh, the playmaker. Vicente Sanchez uh, injured his knee and then went on to score this goal against Los Angeles last week. What a beautiful goal this is. What a wonderful touch. Dinks it up with his left foot. I, I wish he meant it. I don't think he did mean it. I think he was looking at Drew Moore on the far side. And to be fair, he was honest enough to say he wasn't trying to score, but it's still a great goal, isn't it? Of course, he told reporters, I meant to do it all along. <laughs> I <laughs> would if it was a me. I'll tell you, I'll claim a wall. Going for the back post. Of course I did. <laughs> Vicente Sanchez, look at that, goals per minute. Ahead of Dempsey, Jao Plata. There's some, some good company there as well. And, you know, it's another thing that the Earthquakes need to take advantage of tonight. Can't stress enough that, you know, these are six-point games. Western Division rivals, an opportunity to get six points, three from us, three they don't get. Two games in a row at home. Big stress for the Earthquakes, big one for the fans as well to come out and support. These are the kind of games where you really need your fans to be there and support you. Briefly touched by the veteran John Bush. Pirazzi now for San Jose. Trying to get forward. Attempt by Gordon Salinas. Wondolowski and now Kari Stevenson. Andreas Gorlitz did not play in Vancouver. Contact and a foul as Clute went down after the collision. Deeper House just getting a little bit too much of Chris Clute on that one. Chris Clute is actually looking very good for this Rapids and I played the whole 90 minutes last game uh, at right back. And one of the guys has been mentioned as a future U.S. international. Chris Clute has uh, had a very good year so far. Gabriel Torres, lofting one for Kamani Hill. Careful, careful, careful. That will go, on, will go out to the Rapids as he was tangled up there with Jordan Stewart. Picking up the ARs, Mike, on that one. That's great stuff. I like it when the ARs, are, I like it when the officials are talking to the players, getting involved, you know, and letting them play a little bit, but maybe give them a little bit of leash as well and let them get into a tackle. Gabby Torres. Salinas. Nice positioning by Alec Gordon. Quickly taken over by the Rapids. Don't forget, Monday, Sportsnet Central tonight at 10.30. A full day of action already as the Giants were in Pittsburgh earlier today. The A's, a doubleheader. Of course, the draft, NFL draft. First round tomorrow. Meanwhile, it's a little bit strange. San Jose has Colorado in short order. We mentioned uh, just a few weeks ago. And then they won't play Colorado again until late September. So if they're going to want to get on top of this head-to-head, -head, tonight would be a good night to do it. Yeah, once again, a Western Division rival. If you get four points out of two games, one on the road, one at home so far, if they get this victory here at Buckshaw tonight, that's the kind of results you need as you sort of sneak yourself back up into that playoff picture. Ty Harden, who also got the start against Colorado on the road, gets the start in this one. Watts into the air for Colorado, but take it over by San Jose in the midfield. Chip ball forward. Tiba Harris, beautiful ball from Gorlitz. Can he get to it? The cross! Wondolowski could not direct that ball on Irwin. And now a counter opportunity for Colorado. But an errant ball there from Dylan Powers. Tiba Harris tried to pick out Gordon there. Difference between this match in Vancouver, the opening minutes? Yeah, much so. I mean, I think the earthquakes have definitely started a lot brighter. Uh, getting more people around the ball. Andreas Gordas has come in and played a wonderful ball over the top there to Atiba Harris. He's got there just before it went out of bounds and cut it back. And you put your mortgage on Wando on that one because that's the kind of opportunity he always seems to get on the end of. The timing of his run, once again, how does he get so free in the box? I don't understand. I wish I could have done that. It's a great ball by Harris, though. Great ball. 
I talk to Wando every now and then at training. I might be able to set up some one-on-one -on -one instruction for you. I'm too old for that. <laughs> My time's been undone. <laughs> there you see the near awesome season back in 2012. Well, I think he's been awesome ever since he put an earthquake shirt on again. I, I, we talked about that trade and, and the fact that he was sort of languishing on the bench in Houston when the earthquake's uh, ownership and uh, general manager went and got him back again. And since then, he's just been a breath of fresh air to this franchise. Buttle and Powers converged. Possession stays with the blue jerseys of the Quakes. Tested down nicely there by Gordon. Alan Gordon's doing a great job so far being available because the, uh, the Rapids are really putting a high pressure onto the back four of the Earthquakes, not letting them play at the back. They're having to bypass that first line of pressure. And it's all about Alan Gordon making himself available and keeping possession. He's been excellent in the first 10 minutes or so. Well, as we watch Colorado, we talk about putting the pressure on. as a nifty sidestep move there for Victor Bernardes, who picking up ahead of steam. Is Colorado can look at the video. They look at the videotape. They can see what has worked for opponents against San Jose, and that's putting pressure on the ball immediately, sometimes bringing two players to it. Jordan Stewart sent to the turf. Atiba Harris onside, chested down. Harris is shot. Let's go downstairs. Kate Scott has uh, info on a special guest. Yeah, a guest that you guys and probably everyone watching tonight recognizes, but you usually see him in a basketball jersey. That's Steph Curry. Steph's here because he's good friends with fellow North Carolina native and current Rapids keeper Clint Irwin. Now the Quakes are hoping that by the end of the night, he may be rooting against his friend. They made him a personalized Quake jersey. They've also sat him in the president's box, so we'll see if the Goonies can win him over by the 90th minute. Guys? Clint Irwin and Steph Curry. We could use one of his three pointers, couldn't we? That's for sure. What a great year he's had. Fantastic playoff run. The Warriors, in terms of getting that to game seven with the Clippers, albeit disappointing for the Bay Area fans. And of course, Steph Curry. But maybe he can bring some mojo to the Quakes in this one. And it's Colorado just keeping possession. Chris Klute. Elundu, the 19-year-old from Cameroon. They'll switch it. And O'Neill blasting forward. We've talked about not having Clarence Goodson for this one, but Andreas Gorlitz, the veteran from Germany, also can add a calming presence to that back line. Yeah, I wonder if... Uh... Charles, Charles Olundu thought that his first ever game in MLS being a 19-year-old from Cameroon would be against a 31-year-old German from Bayern Munich. It's a good matchup for them, and I think that, you know, from Gordich's standpoint, you know, he's got his hands full tonight because Olundu's got a lot of speed. It's a fine shot on the outside coming in from Kamani Hill. And just, oh, sorry, no, it's actually from uh, uh, Thomas Pymeyer. And that one, I think John Bush knew where it was going. You could see that he was worried about the little deflection maybe from Edson Buttle, who was throwing his body at it. Hopped right over Buttle's foot. 99 goals for the veteran. Here's Gabby Torres. And a nice run into the area. Contact. And Elfaf says play on. Just not hearing the whistle there gives these players an indication of how this game is going to be officiated early. Yeah, I think it was a good no call. I think that uh, we haven't seen the replay, but I think certainly it looked like uh, Jordan Stewart got into a good position and made a clean play. Just got his body there in front. Jordan does that so very well. His covering work, covering his center backs from that left back position is uh, exemplary. I love the way that Kyle Stevenson and Parazzi have settled down in the midfield. They seem to be very positive, looking to go forward rather than sideways, trying to connect, especially with Chris Wondolowski and Alan Gordon. Here's Buttle. Alondu slips, but recovers. Chips this one in, and it's poked to the side. 
Beautiful job by John Bush. It looked like a tricky ball coming in. It was an awkward one, wasn't it? Really awkward because I think Bushy thought maybe that Victor was going to get a touch on it, and so he had to wait for the last minute. Sometimes those can sneak in. Fermer getting forward. Victor Bernardes, who will have uh, some World Cup in his future coming up for the Honduran national team. In all likelihood. Yeah, I think so. I think he's a certainty to be on the plane. He was already in the 30, along with Marvin Chavez, who's on the bench for the Rapids tonight. He's been selected into the 30 for the World Cup for Costa Rica, which will be whittled down to 23 very soon. Quarter hour gone in this one. Clute for Colorado. That ball sneaks through to Buttle. Buttle trying to turn the corner. Buttle, Torres, it was Clute who took the shot and sends it wide. Here's Alondo with the cross that came in. You can see that. It skips a little bit in front of John Bush, and it was a bit of a late, late minute effort by John, but Earthquake certainly got away with one here because he broke so nicely, and I thought Torres was going to tap it in, and Chris Clute just took it off his own player's foot, thankfully. A little bit of communication there from Torres, and that's a side footer into the net. Touch there by Moore. Powers. Going down on contact with Stevenson. Yeah, that's good work by Kyrie Stevenson. He's really putting a lot of pressure on, on Powers and Watts every time he can in that midfield area, making sure they know he's here to play tonight. It's a big opportunity for Kyrie. I know he wants to play. He's been training well, and now he's got the opportunity. Making just his second appearance of the season for San Jose. Came on as a second-half substitute against RSL to start the season. Get your spot in the T-Mobile 4G Power Zone. Ticket's just $17. $10 off a day of game priced Earthquakes ticket. T-Mobile 4G Power Zone vouchers available to purchase at over 50 T-Mobile locations across the Bay Area. Go to sjearthquakes.com for participating T-Mobile locations. Harris getting there first. It's like both sides are opting for the over-the-top longer ball to start this match than trying to move it through the midfield. Well, here comes Clute for Colorado. Dylan Powers. Moore stepping up at midfield. Got a chance to see Jared Watts win a touch there in Colorado. We have contact. This will be a foul on Kari Stevenson. Yeah, I think the referee's just having a word with Kari there. That's maybe two or three in a row. You can see where Kari's really trying to make sure that uh, Dylan Powers is marked very closely. Powers is a, another player that's been penciled in for the World Cup squad. I don't think he'll make it, but it's based upon his performances, and he's a good player that needs to be watched closely. It's Kari's job tonight to do so, I think. Missed the 4-1 loss at Seattle two weekends ago with some knee pain. Of course, the Rapids rebounded with a nice victory against the LA Galaxy. They've had their share of luck, though, the, the, the Rapids. They've scored five goals on penalty kicks. Robbie Keane missed a penalty kick for the Galaxy in that game as well and hung on to win 1-0 the Rapids, but uh, they've taken advantage of their good fortunes. Pirazzi stepping up. It's a good run right played forward for Gordon. He will get to it first. His cross. Nobody home in front. And that one trickles out for a goal kick. That's just good play all around because Alan Gordon's made a wonderfully timed run to get behind here. He's not offside. I like to see a Tiba Harris. He's got to get into that six-yard box. He's made the run, the wrong run there with Tiba Harris. He's looking for the cutback, but at that speed is very difficult for. Uh, for Gordo to do so. And again, Shea Salinas providing the service forward for Alan Gordon. We're so used to Shea's crosses 
as he approaches the end line. That one was a good ball through. Once again, Gorlitz. We've seen Elundu slip a couple of times already in this match. Able to step around Perazzi there. Buttle with an opportunity. And again, coming over to help out Ty Harden. Great block by Harden. That's what the Earthquakes need to do more. Throw their bodies at things. It wasn't happening enough in the first 20 minutes in Seattle. It was too easy to take shots from outside. And Ty Harden leading by example here. Sometimes you just got to throw your body there and take it wherever it hits you. But you cannot let it get through to your goalkeeper as easy as it was last weekend against Vancouver. You could definitely see the adjustment. Not as much space to maneuver from uh, 18 to 25, 30 yards. But a set piece here. Miss hit. And now San Jose. Looked like they had a brief counter attack, but pulled back by Wando. That'll be a throw for San Jose. Of course, we talked about the short order matches Saturday. Quakes and FC Dallas here at Santa Clara. 7.30, they'll kick it off. And you could catch it right here at Comcast Sportsnet. Dallas playing in Seattle tonight. Another big matchup and leading so far 1-0 and a penalty for Michelle. And, um, you know, they're going to come in here and after... I don't think they'll have the time to travel back, so they'll be practicing in the Bay Area probably and getting ready for the game Saturday. So, once again, big opportunity for the Quakes to get their opposition, key opposition, at good times. There's a foul on O'Neill. Wondolowski going down, but able to pop right back up. So a set piece for the Quakes here. Wondo's missed the ball that time, and Shane O'Neill's come nice and tight on him. Just a foul. Shane O'Neill, one of the homegrown players, is you see Wondolowski's career against Colorado. And if you pile up the amount of goals he's been able to pile up, you're going to have some numbers like that against some teams. Chivas, one of them. This one will go out. Corner kick. For San Jose, the second of the match. And the more corners and set pieces the Quakes get, the more dangerous they are. There you see the big bodies. Yeah, there are some big bodies. Victor's in there. Tipa Harris, six foot three. Ty Harden, Alan Gordon, all at the top of the box. Quakes are pretty good on these. Stewart. Played it behind Salinas. Back to Shea. Cuts in. Enters the area. Puts a shot on. Punched away by Irwin. Bicycle kick attempt by Harden. And it was deflected in front. But it certainly wasn't as it was drawn up in practice, was it? I don't think. But it never came out in the end. Bit of uh, innovation between Jordan Stewart and Shea Salinas. Nearly caught the Raptors defense napping. Sometimes the shortest distance isn't between <laughs> is between two points, or isn't? In this case, it wasn't. How about the bike from Ty Hardy? He got that effort as well. Been a bright start. Good start. 20 minutes has been entertaining so far from both teams. I feel like the Earthquakes have got the slight edge. They seem to be into it tonight, which is good to see. Atiba Harris has started bright and has played in the game so far for the Earthquakes as well, so I'm encouraged. Drew Moore for Colorado, looking for a scene. Lundu, briefly back to Clute. San Jose able to take it away. Directed to Gordon. And there's Jordan Stewart. Nursing various injuries early in the season, but he's back seemingly at full strength for San Jose. Here's Wando. Tiva Harris. Kari Stevenson with a left foot. Oh, ho, ho. just over the bar. And anybody who's watched Kari Stevenson in his history with San Jose knows that he can pick it out from distance. Well, I think this one was for Kate, don't you? I mean, he told he was going to shoot from everywhere, and he has. He doesn't like Kari. He's got a great shot with both feet. You know he passionately wants to try and get one of the goal for the Earthquakes tonight, but he started that play as well. He's been very influential in the game so far. 
As we said, Kari, just his second appearance, his first start of the year for Mark Watson. Last year, nine starts for RSL, had a goal and an assist. And San Jose putting the pressure on early in this match. Some contact there briefly. Jordan Stewart looking to the referee's assistant for some help on the contact. Buttle. We see what the first half has been to San Jose. They've stumbled at times. Lundu trying to drive one through. Three different Quakes players. And again he slips. It's almost like he's on roller skates. He should be playing for the Avalanche, not the Rapids, the way he's skating around out there. But another great block there by Victor Bernardes. This time Alundu. A run from Torres. That is shot with a left foot. Again, tapped by Harden, who got in the way. Can San Jose counter here? Alan Gordon has Salinas on the wing. That's the matchup they want here. Jay had his service steered aside. And the Quakes have possession once again. Yeah, seemingly night and day from last week to the early part of this match this week. Toronto. As you can see, uh, a win over Vancouver. There's a Houston on a goal by Will Bruin in the 49th minute to beat Columbus. And there's your halftime score. Dallas with the penalty from Michel. The set-piece expert has the lead. Yeah, Jermaine Defoe's fit again for Toronto and scored this evening as well in that win. MLS match, but rather Canadian Cup match. Contact there, another foul. I don't know about that one. No, I think it was there to be won by Carlos. And the referee's doing a good job. I mean, yes, he's going, that's two or three fouls. You've got to be careful, but I don't, I don't really think that was anything that would lead to a yellow card. It's just that um, Commander Hill just got a little bit of a touch on it before uh, before Kali got there. Commander Hill of Bay Area, product from Berkeley, played collegiately at UCLA. And there's Alundu cutting in. And once again, a quake there to help out. It was Parazzi this time. Gorlitz set over the back of Wondolowski. Well, too far in front of Gabby Torres, recovered by Pinazzi to Bush. Nice play by Jared Watts, though, one of the guys who's in the running for the Rookie of the Year, along with our Owen J.J. Caval. But Jared Watts looks very comfortable and assured playing at this level for his first year. Not bad for a second round pick in the Super Draft 2014. Well, that's the way you got to pick him up, haven't you? That's what your scouting system is all about. And making sure you can pick up the right players at the right time that fit into your system. Coming up on the half hour. Torres trying to release Buttle. Another rapid slips on this turf at Buckshaw. Nice ball. Pirazzi, Gordon. Salinas. Steps right by the defender. Left-footed cross, deflected out. And San Jose will have their third quarter of the match. This good wing play again by Shea Salinas. It had to be the cover O'Neill that saved the day for them and gave away the corner kick. But another very positive first-time pass by Parazzi at the midfield as well. He and Stevenson are trying to go forward any time they can, and it's, it's working. Karazzi looking for Harden. The ball slips by off the post. It looked like it hit the post. And we'll see if that went off a rapid or not. It did, and it'll be a corner kick to fourth. Well, it nearly dropped to Chris Wondolowski, but his little bit of head tennis in there kept alive 
very, very well by Ty Hardin. And it's actually an excellent little save on the left-hand side by just a reaction save by Pinto. Pinto with another good one. Not quite off the post, just inches away. Gorlitz, it's headed on by Hardin, but right into the waiting mitts of the Rapids keeper, Irwin. Irwin's going to slow it down a little bit here, take this momentum away from the Quakes if he can, but at the moment, Ty Harding's playing extremely well also and getting on the end of things and causing problems for the Rapids defense. It was fantastic. I love that to have the microphone so close there. You can hear it was either Drew Moore or Shane O'Neill looking at his teammates on that back line saying, who's here? Who's here? That's the famous who's got him. Who's got the one who's good? That's when we all turn around and say, it wasn't me. Hey guys, how are you? Mark Watson uh, with us now. And, uh, Coach, you've got those three matches in, in eight days. We're in the middle of that now. How is the uh, squad performing in terms of having some new faces out there? No, I think it's been a bright start. Yeah, we, we made some changes. No, we have, um, you know, three games in a, in a relatively short period of time. So I, I think they've given us a lot of energy, and I think, uh, I think the team in general has had a really bright start. No, I like the start very much, Coach, and, uh, you know, do you, do you see anything you can change, tweak it, just to get the advantages at all, what you see so far? I, th I think we can break a little quicker. I think any time we've, um, we've broken quickly with quality and got the ball wide and, and, uh, and forward early, even, you know, to our wide players or even to, to Wando in a little hole, we've been dangerous, so we've got to keep looking to do that. Uh, if it's not on, we just need to move the ball, uh, ball quickly and, and find another way forward. All right, thanks, Coach. As always, head coach Mark Watson of the Earthquakes. As San Jose continues to put pressure on Colorado here past the 30 minute mark. Well, I do think uh, that the Earthquakes have got a very good squad. Uh, and they've got more depth this year than they've had in the, in the season before. A lot of niggly injuries and uh, missing key players like Leonard and obviously Goodson out tonight. But that's why you have a squad of players. And, and the Rapids are doing the same thing. But believe me, players like Ty Harden, Kari Stevenson, JB, I mean, these guys want to be on the on the, the starting 11, not the guys that come in when there's three games in eight days. So it's an opportunity. Up the flank, Gorlitz, weaving around Ilundu, and able to get that cross in front, and it'll go out to Colorado. Do you want to go to the California Classico match at Stanford Stadium for free? Yes. You're already going. Throughout the month of May, if you visit a personal banker at one of the 10 Wells Fargo branches in the South Bay to perform a financial review, you can receive those two vouchers to the normally sold-out match. Visit sjearthquakes.com forward slash Wells Fargo ticket voucher for more. Well, if somebody could tell me that this year's game is going to be the same as the last two we've had, then I will pay to go. We've had, what, 4-3 and 5-4? Amazing finishes. The best one was when we came back from 4 0 down. That was great. Oh, and then there was the year, of course, there was uh, Q going at it with David <laughs> Beckham. That's one of my all time favorites. And Scorlett's able to rip that one away. And here's Butter. Lundu. And again, there's Ty Hart. I mean, any time you go after the opposing team's mascot, you've really committed. Who was the mascot? Q or Beckham? Which one was? <laughs> we'll leave it at that. San Jose will have the throw. There's our guy. I wonder what his wife looks like. <laughs> I know what Beckham's look like. She's a Spice Girl. Side. We're going to go easy on him. Once again, you see the Rapids trying to put high pressure on the Earthquakes defense, which causes that long ball to Adam Gordon to go and chase. It's well, of energy being expanded by the, uh, especially by people like Alundu and, and Budo and Torres. But so far, the Quakes have dealt with it very well. I would like to see Kari try and link up with Bernardes when he has brought his feet just like he is now so the earthquakes can play through the lines which they are doing now it's a strategy that worked very well against Chivas running the opponent 
the width of the pitch in the first half, and San is able to come away with a victory there. But this is when the earthquakes are at the best, when they're moving the ball quickly and it's going side to side, and eventually they're able to isolate somebody like Jordan Stewart. And here comes Jordan. He's got Wando heading in across just a little bit early. Wando a couple of steps back, and Irwin is there. It's great energy and great commitment by Jordan Stewart. What a run that is. That's a long burster. And the numbers are good. Wando's in, always nearly got in front of Chris Creed there. Better ball. And maybe it could have been 1-0, 1-0. Gabby Torres, no match for Victor Bernard is there. And San Jose again wins it. Harris. Gorlitz overlapping. And ball. That one off the arm of Watts. Yelica. And now Watts pokes it away as Atiba Harris was, was trying to restart for San Jose. And Ismail Elfath will set the ball down. And for a second there, it looked like he was calling for Jared Watts. Yeah, I don't think he's going to do it. Actually, I like the referee and the way he's dealt with things so far. But, you know, it's a, it's a handball, it's a free kick. That is a little bit impetuous by the, the, the youngster. But I think he's going to get a talking to, just like Carl has got a couple of times, so I can't complain. But it's a good position to have a free kick. I think Shea Sullivan wants to bend it in, but I think if uh, Shea Sullivan, if uh, Carly Stevenson could hit it, he would. Wondolowski, Gordon, Harris, and Harden. Kari's shot is deflected. Harris slides, goes down. And no foul call as Colorado comes away with possession. Surprised? I thought it could have been a penalty. You know, it's a great strike by Kari. He's hit the ball, and it's knuckled and dipped before Clint, Ir Clint Irwin. It's in Buttle now in a dangerous spot. Victor Bernard says enough. It's going out. It's a good strike by Carr, and it's tipped just in front of Irwin, gave up an awkward one, but is, is that a penalty? You know, maybe a pull back there by Kamani Hill on the shoulder of, no, no. I think that uh, Atiba Harris is trying to play for it just a little bit, but there's a good opportunity for Harris to get on the end of that one, and a good strike by Carr Stevenson. This one in front, Torres. Nearly had that. It went all the way through the hill. Sent back in and headed out. That was an opportunity there as Hill was about to be in some open space as Torres used his body to shield the defender. It's a nice open game. It's a much better game than the game that was up in Colorado a couple of week, weeks ago, that's for sure. One shot in that match, I believe. Lundu enters the area, has some room, and rolls one softly to the keeper. Key, the opening 45 minutes. Throughout the league, how about that one? Teams are leading at half. Good work by Carly Stevenson again. Big and strong. That one intended for Wondolowski. Klute stepped in front. Yeah, he picked the wrong option out there. I think he should have gone out to Jordan Stewart or Shea Salinas on the opposite side. That ball deflected right to Powers and played forward, but Bush off his line is able to get there. I believe for a foul. Well, ironically, the referees called the ball back to John Bush for the, the old rolling ball. Remember the rolling ball? I do remember the rolling ball. Yeah, yeah. It was not kind to the earthquakes. No, we had one of those against New England, didn't we? I think officially it was for an offside. That's why they brought it back. So far, Ty Harden has been in the right place at the right time on a couple of attacking sequences for Colorado. Karazzi waited a little bit too long there. Springing a counter. Powers. Kamani Hill. 
He wants to put a shot on, and that'll be a souvenir for the Ultras. As we are into the 40th minute now, clearly, Monty Hill not pleased. I'm just smiling because you got uh, Parazzi turning around to Gordon and asking him, why didn't you tell me somebody was man on? We got the French speaking guy asking the German speaking guy <laughs> to tell me man on in English. Obviously, uh, English is the common language throughout the team. Harris. Shadows eight. That one skipped right over Salinas. Blake's recover. Again, Alundu. Powers. Buttle to the end line. And again, there's Ty Harden. Yeah, he's done well, Ty Harden. He's tracking the runs of Torres extremely well. This guy, Alundu, on the left is a box of tricks, but when he clears the space, he sends some Buttle that finally gets to the byline. Ty Harden reads it so well again. First corner kick coming up for Colorado. Jamie, hold, Jamie, hold. Good, 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 Jamie. This one will swing in. Loose of the box. Powers lets one through to Alundu. And the Ultras are going to be pretty happy with uh, Colorado sending balls up into the Quakes. Rooting section behind the goal. There's a chance that one may not come back, I think, for the Ultras <laughs> up there. That's what I meant. <laughs> well, 42nd minutes, and I, I think that, as Coach Mark Watson said, I think he'd be happy with the first half performance, especially with five or six changes, some forced, some unforced. Um, giving players rest in this lineup for the Quakes. I think it's been a bright 40 odd minutes, and I think they've been the better team, maybe deserve to be leading this game 1 0 at half. Kari Stevenson had an opportunity as Wanda sneaking behind, headed back to Irwin. And a nifty job by Moore there. This time the referee may reach into his pocket to be honest, but I think that was a little bit nasty from Alundu from behind. Unless I'm reading that one wrong, but uh, Andreas Gordas has stayed down in the corner. And John Bush is motioning for the training staff to come on over. I hope Andy Gordas is okay because he's had a lot of niggly injuries since he came over. And a yellow card for Alundu. To join the earthquakes, and uh, Alundu is showing a little bit too much enthusiasm for this ball. He's just trying to shield it out, he's Andy Gordas. And uh, I think that maybe that follow through on the right uh, knee caught the back of the right knee of Andy Gorlitz and unnecessary foul by Younger Lundu. And so Gorlitz reach right for that right knee. Trying to get position in front of Alundu. And all he can hope for is the best for Andreas Gorlitz is Brandon Barklage. Get ready to come on. Let's take another look at this one here because I think that uh, actually when he's planted his right leg, it maybe snapped a little bit on him there. Yeah. You know, when you put the pressure on, you can see the knee jar. I mean, that could be anything from just a, a bruise to a, you know, a, a bad ligament injury. Could be anything. So let's hope it's just the, the former, not the latter. I believe Mark Watson would like to try and get to half without having to make the change unless B. Lee, the trainer, is saying no. Brandy Barklage makes his way to midfield. He's yeah. getting ready to come on. As we are minute number 44. But right now, San Jose playing a man short offside, Jordan Stewart. 
Well, Brandon will come in and it's absolutely like for like. In, in fact, Brandon Barlitz has got a, for me, he's got a little bit more speed than Andy Gorditz, and that may be a better matchup with Olundu, who certainly, as I mentioned, is a very enthusiastic and a box of tricks out there. But um, uh, uh, Gorditz has that little bit of quality going forward that maybe the earthquakes will miss as well. Here comes Colorado, however. The cross trying to pick out Olundu, who was just entering the area. Watts. Here's Powers. Handling the midfield duties. Barklage. Good start and stop. Barklage, the 27-year-old from St. Louis, making his fourth appearance. And there's contact on Watts. It'll be one minute, one minute of stoppage time. Pierre Mayer, haven't had a chance to talk about him that much tonight. 24-year-old Austrian. Got to start against the Quakes in Colorado. Hill with a cross deflected out. And another Quake. This time Pirazzi goes down. Corner kick coming up for Colorado, but to Mark Watson. Gotta wonder what's going on here. Yeah, it's an elbow by Edson Battle. It's, it's a little bit of a, a wild swipe back on the left arm of Edson Butter was called JB Perazzi in the mouth. That's a sore one. And the train has come on, which means that uh, Perazzi has to go off on a set piece. So the Quakes will be one man down here. Alan Gordon will come back, so there shouldn't be a problem. John Bush getting everybody in position here. This will be an outswinger. Sent low. Kari Stevenson in good position will knock that one out. And that'll be it for the opening 45 and change. Neither team able to get on the board. Some concerns for the Quakes in terms of the health of Andy Gorlitz. And Sid Buttle had his opportunity. Shea Salinas with more quality service from that left side. And Chris Wondolowski just missing the near post by inches as the Quakes and Rapids. This is becoming a habit, these two teams. He's working with the substitutes to make sure he gets into the rhythm of this game and the speed of this game. As veteran move by Brandon to make sure that he's ready to play at 100%. San Jose sending it deep. Chase Salinas with a bit of a run there for one. There's Barclay getting right into the mix. We'll get our halftime report now as we go downstairs to Kate Scott. Well, Anthony, as Chris was mentioning, just at the end of the first half, the Quakes did play great, and Mark Watson echoed that coming out of the locker room. He said he loved the guys' energy, loved the possession. He really loved all of it except for the Gorlitz injury. So he just asked the guys for more of that for the entire second half. He says if they bring that pace, bring that energy, the goals are going to come. Guys? The Emmy-nominated Kate Scott. Yeah, congratulations, Kate. With a halftime report for her work on Quake's broadcast. We say a key member of this crew, a key member. Congratulations, Kate. Last year's California Classico, we talked a little bit about it earlier, as that one goes out for a goal kick. Anytime the Galaxy and Quakes get together, fireworks on the pitch and off the pitch at Stanford Stadium. Yeah, I mean, that venue has been very kind to the Earthquakes, hasn't it? And uh, quite kind to the fans as well. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better venue, and I couldn't ask for a better night. It just seems to be a, a rivalry that's grown so well, and such an exciting games that have been there every time the game's played at Stanford. No shortage of goals on those matches either. As now Torres is offside, the flag goes up early, with a little help from the back line for San Jose. Second offside of the match for Colorado. 
That's a great veteran play by Victor Bernard as he knew exactly where Torres was and as soon as the possession was turned over he stepped forward and played the Panamanian player offside. And there's Kari right in the middle of things. There's Londo. Sent right into the middle of that back line for Colorado. And now the other way for a throw for San Jose. Victor Bernardes, kind of the quiet enforcer. Yeah, you talk about players with injuries as well, and Victor's, he doesn't train every day. He nurses a little niggles. He's got a little bit of a knee that's been going on for a while now, but he's out there for every game. I mean, he really is a warrior in, in the best of the, of the sense of the world. And, you know, he's called up to the World Cup camp for Honduras. I think he's a one of those sort of some people are, are putting pencil i think he's putting a uh, black marker pen for me he's a definite starter for the honduras national team going to brazil and definitely not a lock former earthquake marvin chavez you got news that he was be called into camp this will be a foul o'neill again making contact with gordon those two seem to be like a, a magnet with a piece of metal they always seem to come together It's a handful Aaron Gordon and so Stephen Leonard. I mean, they, you know, everybody sort of has their opinions on the way they play, but I know that if you t if you were to poll the defenders in the league, they really don't like playing against Stephen Leonard and Alan Gordon. That is 100 percent sure. Alundu trying to slide one to Buttle. San Jose there again. Shea gives it away as Alundu remains down. Gabby Torres. Barklage got a foot in there. One touch passing. And now to Salinas. Perfect example. Settle things down a little bit. Move the ball into some space. Yeah, and it's nice play by Kari Stevenson back in the midfield area. Bit of calmness, a one touch passing, as you mentioned, Anthony, and then bringing it out through the lines. It's not a long ball for to Alan Gordon. If it's not on, the players have the ability to play it through as well. Another great switch. Oh, yes, good switch. Gordon, Wondolowski, taps it back. There's a left footed shot, but wide of the mark. Atiba Harris had an opportunity, of course, Ty Harden stepping into the lineup on that back line for that man as Clarence Goodson. Yeah, he's got a couple of knocks from the game up in Vancouver and wasn't able to go tonight. And obviously everybody hoping that Clarence Goodson will get the call on a Monday as well from Jurgen Klinsmann. Kate Scott with more on the U.S. camp for Jurgen Klinsmann. Well, Anthony, as Chris just mentioned, yeah, Jurgen is going to make his preliminary roster call on uh, Monday, May 12th, and then he'll knock it down to the final 23 as we get closer to Brazil. And also worth noting, former Quake and uh, current white cap right back Stephen Bainisher. He's been named to Iran's training camp roster, so really exciting time for a number of former and current Quakes guys. Bainisher, Stephen Bainisher, South Bay native. It's an exciting time for players around the world, and the uh, big, uh, big Felipe, big Phil from Brazil just named his 23. No room on the squad for Robinho, Kaká. I mean, who they got Brazil? I mean, it's got to be, that must be a heck of a lot of good players in Brazil if you can't make, can't make your best 23. Good problems to have, right? Yeah, it is good problems to have, but they have a lot of good stars. And I, for one, would be glued to the set when it comes to June. I'm hoping that the U.S. can get some results. A tough group they're in, though, with Germany and Portugal, that's for sure. Care to make a prediction? Ghana in there as well? Oh, Ghana's in there as well, yeah. And, and certainly the U.S. have never had the best of times against Ghana, and you think that's the one that they would win, but... Uh, I think they may have said a few people, you know, uh, surprise a lot of people in the U.S. They've got some very good players led by Michael Bradley, who I think is playing. He play, played against Mexico as good as a midfielder I've seen play anywhere in the world for about 30 minutes. He was brilliant. And what a difference he's made for uh, Toronto. Along with Defoe. San Jose possession here. And now our... 
Referee Ismail Elfath is saying a lot with his hands, including no more. But he's been consistent and he's had a very good first half or good, what is it now, 50 minutes, I think, the referee, because two or three times he's counted out one, two, three, and he's always given the next foul, if it is a good foul, as a yellow card. So that's all he can ask his players. Be consistent, talk to me, give me a chance. Charles Elundu, a yellow card for Colorado. Here's an opportunity for San Jose. Salinas playing for him for Gordon. His shot, oh, just wide. And you think Alan Gordon would like to have that one back? Well, I think he would, and I think he knows it, but, you know, he just fell in between his feet, I think, you know, and he's a great little one to his play with Shea Salinas. Once again, Shea's playing the setup, man. It's set right between what, uh, Gordo's left foot and his right foot, and he's trying to hit it with the inside of his left, and that's not the shot. You know, he's got it with the outside of the left or the inside of the right is the shot, and it's just inches wide, but that certainly is the best opportunity for the Quakes so far. Coming in the 53rd minute. That man, Shea Salinas, involved again. He's been very consistent in creating opportunities for his strikers. Colorado got caught sending too many men to the ball. Powers. Watch stepping forward. Pierre May. It's the Quakes. Chase to the far touch line. Ilundu trying to slide through Barklage and Atiba Harris. And that may have been the best thing for San Jose to make contact there. Ilundu's asking for the yellow card there, which I don't like to see. And, you know, this guy's been lively, but I, I, for me, Ilundu is making the wrong decisions. That was the correct decision to take people on. Although you question it with two of them, but a lot of times he's running too much with the ball. He's going to get himself hurt, this kid. Powers will take this. Going to get forward, headed down by Harris. He's loose for a second, and now springing a San Jose counterattack. Here comes Shea Salinas, a nice ball by Barklage. He's got Stewart moving by O'Neill. Tries to put it in front, but Clute tracking back. Able to cut it out. Colorado. End-to-end -end action here at Buckshaw's. Elundu will put this one in. And steering it aside. He had that corner covered, did John Bush. But it's exciting. It's good end-to-end -end action going on. Nice play this time by Elundu because he knows he's got a team of Harris beaten for speed. It's a good cut inside. John Bush has got to save that one all day long because he's at his near post. But this 19-year-old has got a lot of energy and some good moves. Third corner kick. Powers again. High ball, punched up into the air by Bush. Contact made and a foul on Colorado. Contact was certainly made. I think that's one of the referees should have a word. I think it was Edson Butler again has got up high. And as John Bush has pushed it away, it's a little bit of a late challenge by Edson Butler. He was already committed to it, I think. So maybe the referee took that into a, account. It's an open game at the moment. It's fun. It's exciting stuff. Which before Alundu nearly had a shot. Well, he had a shot on goal. It was a good save by John Bush. Before that, there was a great opportunity there for Shea Salinas. But this guy's been so consistent, Anthony. You know, he's been, he's been through quite a bit. I think that might be a younger picture of John Bush. But, uh, you know, from save percentage down to the saves, which he uh, crossed the 1,000 mark against Vancouver with a big save in that match. Uh, he has uh, seen quite a bit in his years at MLS. Fairmare gets to that one first. Harden doing a good job wrapping up Buttle. That time Kari steered it just wide of the mark. Hill. Clute joining the plot. Alundu gave it away. Chipped forward. Nicely to Wando. Shea getting a workout on the near touch line. 
That's a good ball. Beautifully done. Picking out Harris. Harris puts a shot on, but didn't get enough on it. Easy for Irwin. Yeah, Tiba House putting his hand up. I don't know why, because Chris Wondolowski's wide open in the middle there, and that's just a bad decision by a Tiba Harris. Don't forget this Saturday, almost 40 years to the day, the Quakes will celebrate the 40th anniversary of the team's first home match against the Dallas Tornado back in 74. Quakes will face FC Dallas 730, presented by Gordon Biersch. Limited tickets at sjearthquakes.com. And I'll tell you who the goalkeeper was for the Dallas Tornado that day. I'm glad I asked. Kenny Cooper's father. Kenny Cooper plays in MLS. It was Kenny Cooper Sr. was the goalkeeper for Dallas Tornado that day. How old, how old am I? <laughs> <laughs> you might have to tell us. I'm going to try to do the math right now. Clearly, Kenny Cooper has had uh, quite a career in MLS as a goal scorer. Spent some time with New York, FC Dallas, Manchester United. Manchester United. Oh, yeah, that team. Buttle picking out Elundu again. Barklage. Oh, oh well played. steps in to cut it out. Now Harris. Garazzi took an elbow to the face earlier. Kari Stevenson went by Watts like he was rooted to the pitch. And here's a shot by Wando. That ball drifted on him just a little bit before he got the boot on it. Result to get a goal kick. It's a good play again by Kari. Big and strong in the midfield, and he's putting a very good shift in for the earthquake so far. You can see on this one where he's just trying to tear Chris Wondolowski, and I don't mind that, shooting on sight. It was a good one for him to hit. I saw a picture of Wanda who looks incredibly rested for someone who has a new baby at home. His daughter Emerson born, I believe last month. And playing. Yeah. <laughs> Matches as well. But it's Colorado now. Moving forward. One hour in the books. Good work by Salinas closing down Paymeyer. Gives the Quakes a chance to move out the box, uh, move the lines up a little bit. Clearly, not the power that Irwin wanted to get on that is Atiba Harris will have that one go out just ahead of his run on that far touch line. But definitely the Quakes seem to be doing a better job finding those players, making those runs, at least compared to the last couple of matches. Well, I thought against Chivas they were bright. They got a good result. Uh, obviously, the first 30 minutes were poor up in Vancouver, and a lot of these changes have been made, and new players have been brought in for rested players. So, uh, once again, uh, but this is a much better out in so far. I think that the Rapids feel that this guy, Alundu, can be the game winner for them. They're trying to find him as quickly as possible all the time, and he's on a yellow card, which is interesting because they're giving him a lot of the ball. Chris Clue just ahead of Dylan Powers. On the same page as his left back, but Clute sent that one through just a little bit ahead. Wanted to bring up the number of times that Alundu has slipped over there. Clearly, he can make some adjustments with his footwear. Yeah, he's just a little jitterbug, isn't he? I mean, he's uh, so lively on his feet that he's changing direction so quickly. And as we all know, uh, we've mentioned many times, the surface here at Buckshaw does tend to get a little bit slippy later in the evening. Right up the gut. Here comes Colorado. Kamani Hill. Wide to Torres. Torres sends it in. But Bush right there. He's bringing a counter now. It's a really open game. It's very much opened up. See Colorado at the hour mark. So dangerous. And what San Jose can do once they get past that 60 minutes. It's an interesting stat that because you can see the energy from the Raptors the last few minutes. It's almost like they can sense this is the time they get on top of teams. But I think the earthquakes are, for me, right in this game, not if even if not dominant in the home scenario. Barclays, a Harris shot. And Irwin with the right arm. But not out of danger yet. San Jose still pressing. Wando had that one go right off of Clute for the corner. 
And it's just a great opportunity here for the Earthquakes because that's just a very good strike. A fairly, you know, hard shot by Atiba Harris. It's actually at a very good height for Clinton Irwin, which made it an easier save than it looked. It looked a spectacular save, but if, uh, if Atiba Harris gets that low to any side of Clinton Irwin, it's a goal. Minute 63. Jay Salinas. More coming on. And a member of the Quakes go right up his back at a foul is called. Elfath. Once again, and this has dropped so nicely for Atiba Harris, but I honestly believe that he's better off just placing that in the corner. Uh, he has the ability to slide that one on the ground and cause a lot more problems for Clint, for Clint Irwin, but Atiba's been bright again tonight. You know, he's one of those players that I think hasn't showed everything he's capable of since he came here from this Colorado team for Marvin Chavez, and tonight's been his better game in an Earthquakes jersey. This time, Hill's going to go down. But Elfath... Chase on, play on. Chase on. Here comes Salinas. Working on that back line for Colorado. Cutting in. With a fake. Now a shot. Oh, the riser. Over the bar. Salinas had some opportunities to dish that one off, but kept it. He was wide open. You know, it's Jordan Stewart found him so early with a great ball over the top. And you could see where Shea Salinas was trying to get onto his favorite right foot. And, Shea, and Chris Wondolowski has done a wonderful job of drawing the defenders away to create the space for him. The Quakes starting to put more pressure. This will be a Victor Bernardes shove in the back. And Ismail Elfath didn't take kindly to the finger wave from Big Victor. Blowing the whistle, putting his hands on his hips, and looking in the direction of the Quake center back. Clute. Buttle. Back heel to Clute. Nice link up. And here comes Victor. The locomotive. Gordon swinging wide. Wando playing for it for Salinas. Here's the service. Directing it. Victor Bernardes took it off the hop. Barkley's pressing forward. Sending it back in. Wando knocked down. But after, he got a boot on it, sending it over the end line. I don't think it is a penalty kick, you know, but this is great energy and good play by the Earthquakes. It's been led by Victor Bernard as it came out the back and stayed up there before the cross that came in from Shea Salinas. He finally won the other side, but that ball is too far away from Chris Wondolowski, who after he's played it for it to be called a penalty kick. He's just trying to flick that one into the net, as Wondo does so well by getting in front of Drew Moore. But it's good energy by the Earthquakes. The crowd are energized. They're really going after the three, which they obviously so much need in these two games in this uh, four-day four stretch. Buttle, a twisting ball, trying to pick that one out of the air. Nowhere near the mark. And there's John Bush to put it back into play. Minute 66. San Jose with a golden opportunity from Alan Gordon in the 53rd minute. Sent his shot just wide of the mark. And the Quakes have been putting pressure on ever since. Barklich, replacement for Andreas Gorlitz, who went down with what appeared to be a knee injury. I want to say for sure, although he's holding that area near the end of the first half. Harris, a nice sliding challenge to dislodge that one. All right, Stevenson playing a little bit with Gabby Torres. Salinas going to the end line, turning the corner, sending it in front. Loose for a bit and cleared out. It sent a ball that looked like it went on. I was about to say sent off of the Rapids player. And Elfath blows the whistle, points to himself. Sorry, fellas. Yeah, he's had a good, he's had a good game. <laughs> he's got a little theater in him. I can't say I can't believe I'm saying good things about a referee, but he's had a good game, this guy. Alan Gordon. Wondolowski. 
Brandon Bartlidge. Once again, Irwin. One on one here. Torres. And that ball got to Bush. Just ahead of the onrushing Gabby Torres. It's a great look by Tim Irwin, though. He looked up as soon as he caught that cross from Brandon Bartlidge. He's looked up. He knows Torres has got the speed maybe on Ty Harden. And it was a great kick by Irwin to set up the one on one opportunity for the Rapids. Torres, who goes by the nickname Little Ghost. He appeared out of nowhere, seemingly, ahead of the Quake back defender. Heavy touch by Powers, taken away. San Jose with Carassi joining. Harris had a good chance on goal just a few minutes ago. Sailing his shot over the mark. Shays on again, Shays on again. Alan Gordon picking out Salinas. That's a good ball. And into Wondolowski. That is back to the goal, but somehow got his head on it. I don't see how you can even di direct that on the target when you're not looking at it. I think he's just trying to get anything on this. Just the slightest touch from this by Chris Wondolowski. In fact, he's got too much on that. He just wants to the glance off his head and go into the far post, but he's got too much on it. But once again, it's just a wonderful pass by Shea Salinas, who's finding all sorts of space out here on this left-hand side. Which I'm surprised because certainly Mastroeni must know this is a bad matchup for the Rapids. Fair Mayor's been having a nightmare <laughs> over there. Boom, boom. Harden again in the middle of it. And Olowski thought he was going to have Atiba Harris breaking down the sideline. It's that elbow again from uh, Edson Buttle. Went a little bit too close for comfort. And Ellen Gordon was grabbing onto the back of O'Neill. We'll have a substitution now coming up for Colorado and coach Pablo Mastroeni. Nathan Sturgis has been called on here. Colorado substitution. For Dylan Powers. Well, I think you can see where Mastroeni is going with this because he's bringing on what I think is primarily a defensive midfielder for an attacking midfielder in Dylan Powers. So I wouldn't say he's uh, Jose Mourinho parking the bus, but he certainly doesn't want to give this game away. I think he's quite happy to get out of Buckshaw today with a point the way the Earthquakes are taking it to them in the second half. Quakes remember Sturgis as an offensive threat. He had two goals. Last year against San Jose. And man, product of Clemson. And Alan Gordon takes a shove and goes down. Sturgis says, I'm out here. Might as well grab onto somebody. Seventy first minute. by Kamani Hill. There's a Lundu. But again, the ball skips on that turf. Out of play. But that's just good work in the midfield there. First of all, Victor Bernardis tries to step in and win it, and then so does Kari Stevenson. A turnover for the Rapids, and that's where the Earthquakes are dominating right now. They're winning the ball back quickly from the Rapids team and keeping the momentum going and keeping the pressure on the Rapids back four. I do think Atiba Harris is getting a little bit tired out there on the right-hand side, though. That could be one spot that's the energy of Cordell Cato, maybe, you think, Anthony? We have Cato on the bench for San Jose. Billy Schuler. Another offensive threat in the 18. But right now, it's taking care of Kamani Hill. And there's Torres. Torres, I don't know if that was a shot or a pass, but cut out nicely. Another Brilliant challenge from Brandon Barklage. Pirazzi, give and go briefly with Gordon. Nicely done by the Quakes to get that out of danger. Yeah, all round good play. First sliding tackle by Brandon was excellent, and then keeping possession to get it forward to Atiba Harris, who I think has run out of gas. 
There's a collision. And again, Barklage having to race back to keep up with Alundu. There's Buttle heading to the penalty spot. Alundu cuts in. Alundu has it taken away again. And Barklage has been a thorn in the side of the 19-year-old from Cameroon. Onolowski trying to outrace O'Neill. Great effort by Wondolowski, though. Trying to just make that sliding challenge to maybe nick the ball away from O'Neill the last minute. Two good plays in a row for Brandon Barkley as well. Last one was dangerous because he went to ground and, you know, uh, he had to make it. If he didn't make it, could have been a penalty kick. Alan Gordon in space. Wondolowski. Sturgis coming on. It's Kari Stevenson. He's been known to unload from there. Garazzi. There's Shea Salinas. Excellent service all night. Sending another one in. Wondolowski. Unable to get ahead on it. Drew Moore stepped in front. Good play by Moore. Just took a little bit of a flick, I think, off of Piamar as it went in and took the pace off that ball. Otherwise, you could have maybe found Chris Wondolowski. To say the Quakes are knocking on the door would be an understatement. They really are dominating this period and uh, playing some excellent football, not only getting it wide to Chris to us, uh, Shea Salinas, but they're playing the ball through the midfield area. Good passing and good switching on the, of, of the point of attack as well. Pablo Mastroeni has already brought on Nathan Sturgis for powers here in the second half. Kamani Hill. Chased by Stewart. Late whistle and a foul on San Jose. Chris Wondolowski, <laughs> the passion. I wonder how many words he says during the game, you think. <laughs> Just like to talk Wondo. He leads this team in a lot of different categories, as I said earlier. Goals is one of them, but emotion, commitment, passion, all of those as well. Chase Salinas able to step in front. Gordon picks that one out. And then shoves it off the shins of O'Neill. That's great play by Alan Gordon. Again, the ball comes out, he holds it up, wins a throw in for his team in the uh, attacking half of the field, moves the lines up. Now the Quays can play closer to the midfield area. Lundu lurking. I'm just waiting for him to get tired. He seems <laughs> Seems like somebody wound him up at the start of this match, and he just keeps going. Yeah, the old Energizer Bunny going on right with that. 5'7", 155. That's not a good ball, Shay. Sturgis stepping in front, playing it forward. But too far once again. Atiba Harris. That one pulled away. And now Colorado will look to settle things down here in the 76th minute. And we may see a substitution coming up shortly for San Jose. I think it's going to be, it will be Cordell Cato, and I would assume it's going to be a like for like on the right side for Tiba Harris. And, and, and I must admit that I think that Tiba Harris has played well tonight. Um, you know, he hasn't had the best of times since he came here to San Jose, but he's put a very good performance in this evening. Just uh, has given his all, just went out of gas a little bit. San Jose with some space here for Alan Gordon. Jordan Stewart trying to come up and join the play as Shea Salinas unable to step around. Pierre Mayer, San Jose will keep possession and we'll have the substitution now. As Atiba Harris will get a round of applause for an outstanding effort tonight. He's done, you know, he's done very well at both ends of the field. He's put some very good defensive performances in since his time with the Earthquakes. But tonight he also got involved in the offense side of things and, and created some danger for the Raptors uh, defense. And this lad here has been... Uh, also very bright this evening. This young 19-year-old from uh, Cameroon has been a handful for both Andy Gordis and also for Brandon Barclidge. And uh, But I think it's a wise thing for Masuendi to take him off at this point because, number one, he's a little bit tired. Number two, he's carrying a yellow card. And he's 
slightly out of control. Dylan Serta on as a replacement. The 17 year old. He's been a handful for opposing defenses as well. We have contact here, a late whistle on a challenge from Victor Bernardes, knocking Gabby Torres down. The referee's gonna go to his po uh, pocket here for the yellow card, and I don't know whether that's just a foul or the continual tour that Victor's given him every time the referee makes a decision. He's been drawing back and forth with the referee here, but I don't think this is a yellow card foul. He's he left his feet, but he seemed to get the ball first for me. You can see the red boot clearly. If I can see the red boot, so can the referee. But I think he also talked back to the referee afterwards a little bit, which is probably why he got the card. 78th minute yellow for Victor Bernardes. Yeah, too much gesticulation is not a good idea. Referees just don't like it. They feel like you're showing them up with what it comes down to. Alan Gordon continuing to chase. And San Jose going to take that one away briefly, but sent back deep by Colorado. Join San Jose Earthquakes players and coaches for the third annual Wine and Dine event Sunday, May 18th at the beautiful Guillermo Winery in Morgan Hill. Join players and coaches, an evening of wine tasting, fine dining, all proceeds benefiting the charitable arm of the Quakes, sjearthquakes.com forward slash community for more information. It's a great afternoon. I've been there two years in a row. The, the players actually serve the wine and get involved and uh, just a lot of fun. I recommend it. I heard rumors of Grape stomping. Is that, uh, does that uh, ring a bell? Yeah, I roll my trousers up. It's not a pretty sight, but I'm right there. <laughs> An image I'd prefer not to have in my head. That's all right. As Gordon slips, Watts. <laughs> 80th minute. Fighting Stevenson here. And now Jordan Stewart, but that one a little bit too hot. Sturgis, the second half sub. Pierman. The Ultras have been very much involved tonight. You know, they've tried to drive the team on. You can hear them clearly on the broadcast. They've sung throughout the whole game and it's a period where they, the Quakes really need these fans because there's 10 minutes left in this game. They need to find a second wind here, another gear to get these three points. Salinas putting pressure on. Sturgis finds an outlet. The veteran Buttle turning the corner, putting a shot on the wide of the mark. Right off the aluminum board. Could hear a hard drive, but never in danger of going in. As you can see, Bush having that near post covered. San Jose will bring on the rookie. J.J. Craval for Kari Stevenson, who also gets a round of applause. And I think he deserves a round of applause, Kari Stevenson. He's had a good game. He's been involved in anything that's been positive for the Earthquakes. He's taken a couple of shots. He's uh, won tackles. He's sprayed the ball around. And, you know, he hasn't played a full 90 for quite a while, Kari. So Mark Watson, I think, correctly has taken him off and brought in the energy of young J.J. Cavall to finish this game out. Cavall joining Cato and Barklidge as the substitutes in this match for San Jose. Harden, shoulder to shoulder with Torres. And again, a good effort. Both players. There's Edson Buttle, so dangerous in these situations. Late in matches. Grazzi for San Jose. 
Salinas as the Quakes look to catch up here. They played a little bit too far in front of Caval. Here comes Torres. Colorado putting pressure on here. Karachi. To the right foot of Watts. Hill. And no doubt about that one, Victor Fernandez. I was just about to say the Quakes are not doing a very good job of clearing their lines, but Victor <laughs> certainly did. I think the look alone cleared it out. Sometimes you've got to do that. They just weren't quite getting it. There were second efforts by the Rapids for a, set, for a period of there. Buttle. No penalty. Cato and San Jose. Working with Barklage. Getting some room to maneuver. Gordon. Knocked out throw. San Jose. Get it onto the foot of Salinas and give it away. Torres slipping past Victor. Late stages of this one. We said at the outset, opportunity, the key here. San Jose with two matches at home. There you see Seattle picking off the Quakes' next opponent. Dallas with a come from behind 2 1 decision. The Quakes have just find that little bit of magic here to get this win. It'll be a massive jump start for them in their season with Dallas coming on Saturday. Coming to off a, a tough game, obviously, in Seattle. What, not an easy opponent for sure. Speaking of which, 7.30. On Saturday, FC Dallas comes to town, and we'll have it for you. Flag is up, offside. Wanda just caught sleeping a little bit, came back from an offside position. Second offside. For San Jose. We reached a point in the evening where it really is up to the earthquakes to make something happen. I think Colorado are very happy to try and see this one out now with six, maybe two or three added time, added extra time as well. Ten minutes left possibly in the contest, and I think the Raptors will be very happy to get out of Buckshaw this evening with a point out of this one. Quakes are going to do everything in their power to make sure that doesn't happen as Cato. Closed in on by Watts and Clute, but winning the throw it. Needs some energy from this guy, Cordell Cato. He is one that has the, the speed and the ability to make something happen for the Earthquakes. Get behind this Rapids defense. Switch for San Jose. The Nazi. A blind. Feed to where he expected Shea Salinas to be. Didn't quite work out. JJ Caval just a little bit too much. Ty Harden thought that would go the other direction. But instead of out off Torres, it was out off Ty. Here comes Sturgis and Victor getting there first. Quakes need to just take care of the ball just a little bit better. JJ needs to settle down in the midfield. He's been a lot of energy, but he needs to also make sure he connects his passes. Victor's certainly not taking any time about things, is he? He has a little intimidation with him. Right back into the middle. Cato get there. 
Bump for Sturgis. Well played. Here's that energy. Cato. Sidestepping defenders. Clute with a toe poke. Parklin having to get back on side, but he's in good position. Looking for Wando. Piermeyer just got his head on it. Very important such as what it was by Piermeyer. Chase Salinas giving it to Wando. Walking in. Shot. front and cleared out no better opportunity tonight here in the 88th minute at least so far what a great move that was by the earthquakes everything was done right on that occasion it felt to just the man you want to fall to as well Shailen Salinas involved again that's a really good foot touch by Pintier one with his left foot and it clips off the post Great opportunity for Chris Wondolowski and the Earthquakes. And good play all around, I thought, by the Earthquakes forwards. Maybe that's just a little bit of a push the Quakes need. I think they've got one more in them. I think there's an, at least another five minutes left in this one. I think there's going to be another opportunity for the Earthquakes. Jordan Stewart would like to initiate. Draw the attention of Drew Moore and Watts. Cerna. And now Torres. Victor Bernard is coming back as the Quakes try and rebound. And Torres deciding to go for the shot there at a bad angle. And the Quakes will thank him. And Stuart Perazzi was played, getting the start tonight. Watson trying to look at his options for this stretch of three games in eight days following the match in Vancouver. Pirazzi and Kari Stevenson got to start in the midfield. And the Quakes are going to have to get going here if they're going to come away with a much needed three points. Cato, second half substitute. Working on Clue. Into the end line and sends it off of the Colorado defender. Sixth corner kick coming up for San Jose as Salinas heads to the far flag here in the 90th minute. And I'm not going to mention the G word, but you know, I think this is the period where the earthquakes excel. I mean, they really do not give up. This is a good service by Shea Salinas. Salinas, in it comes. Loose. And Perazzi unable to connect. But San Jose. Marklich staying on it. Victor Bernardes. And told minimum two minutes of stoppage time. But the Quakes have to be careful. Well played, Brendan Bobbitch. This will be a shot. Easy pickings for Bush. San Jose has to be careful not to put so many players forward that they run into another New England situation. Yeah, certainly, you know, you don't want to give the game away. And I know that there's a desperation for the Earthquakes to pick up the points when they can. And three points will be critical for them. But certainly it will be better to get the one and not lose that one as well as they did against New England. Parazzi couldn't get there. Kamani Hill. We're at the midway point of the two minutes at stoppage time awarded. Piermer. Now it's Colorado pushing. Big ball. Picked out by Jordan Stewart. Salinas. San Jose into Colorado's territory. Wando. Ford El Cato, 20 yards away. Chipped in. And headed back out by O'Neill. JJ Cabal couldn't get there. Final 
30 seconds likely. And now Colorado contend just to kind of hold it up. Trying to pick out Cerna, who slips. Now Cerna on the ball. Butler just done well the last 30 minutes. He's had some tough plays to make. Earthquakes have battled well in that last 30 minutes. Anthony, they've done extremely well to create opportunities. The one they had with Chris Wonder actually didn't quite fall for them, but a tremendous effort was put in by all of the 14 players that took part this evening. Well, the Quakes certainly seem to play the stronger game tonight. Tonight's man of the match is Brian.